Okay, well, uh, bye week wrapped up, and I think it did come at a good time for us, you know, kind of about that midway point, played six games, and took a, a thorough look at really every play of those six games and analyzed a bunch of different ways, uh, looking for obviously some tendencies, where we got to improve on, some things we've done well that we got to be able to build off of. I thought the coaches and the players did a nice job of kind of doing that. Practice just on Wednesday last week, and then we did go um, last night getting a little bit of a head start on, on Iowa, but I appreciate the approach of the guys through the week. And then there was some that just getting refreshed, a couple of days off, get their mind away from it. Um, and so I was pleased kind of with how they approach, approach the week. And now we're heading into a big time challenge coming, coming on Saturday. A program I got a bunch of respect for, the way they do things, the longevity of Coach Ferenc, talked about one of the best in the business. Um, I think I read he did one his 200th game, which is just so, so impressive. I think it looks like an Iowa team that plays Physical brand of football, you know, running the thing, high-end defense, special teams is elite. They can, they can beat you in the pass game offensively a little bit on uh, what they've shown these this first half of the season. So we've got a big-time challenge coming from homecoming weekend. So excited about getting a bunch of alumni back for a, a night game Saturday night. Questions? Yeah, schematically, um, and they are committed to, to making it physical, running the ball. I think defensively, the scheme, the players, um, they give you a lot uh, on, on that defensive side. So it's a different different challenge, and they're playing really well. I mean, they had a nice win last week, handily. Um, and you look at, really, their, their two setbacks this season are against two really good teams. Jonathan, when you've got your system in and your players at Oregon State, you ran the ball by as well as anybody. Do you have to run the ball better the next two weeks to win? Yeah, we need to get uh, improved in the run game. Uh, we want to we want to do that, and that's why again going back this bye week, taking a look at some of the things that we got to do better. Um, because I do, I think su successful offenses, successful teams can run the ball and stop the run. What did you find that you could fix? Well, I'm not going to give all all our flaws or our strategies moving forward, but we did find some tendencies of where. Uh, you know, the negative play in the backfield has to go away in our run game, and so we're trying to implement a couple of things to, to take that out of play. Coach, it's your first homecoming right here. It's your first homecoming game as, as at Michigan State. Um, you've been a part of homecomings before at Oregon State. Um, now that you've been here a couple weeks now on campus, what, do you, what are your kind of expectations from campus, from the alumni going into, you know, kind of a big game around, around school? Well, I count on the atmosphere really throughout the weekend, but day of the game to be uh, you know, festive. I think homecomings are special about college athletics, uh, multiple alums coming back and enjoying their time leading up to the game. So the tailgating, the atmosphere, the Spartan walk, I'm counting on all of that being uh, exciting with some energy. So I'm wondering about with, with the proliferation of all these night games, uh, what, what are the challenges and complexities coaches and players face and, and kind of what's your personal sentiment on, I think, there's almost a half dozen night games. Yeah, um, you know, night games are, are what they are. We don't control the kickoff times, right? And so you got to approach it um, with knowing when the kickoff is. It's really about the back end of the game, right? So you kick off late, you finish late. And so the turnaround time, the recovery time, trying to emphasize that, do a really nice job on Sunday. Um, makes a difference whether you kick it at noon or kicking at 7:30. About the you know, really the next day, um, you know, we don't control it. Um, you'd love to have a little bit of a mix, um, but we're going to line up and play anytime they they let us. Coach, you talked about it somewhat early on, but um, pros and cons of a bye week. What keeps you up at night? What makes you feel a little bit better? Can you educate us on that a little bit? Yeah, I think sometimes uh, the pros are. You know, you've gone through a, a rough stretch to be able to take a deep breath, get a little bit of recovery. I mean, you know, that can be a pro for a, for a bye week. Some of the cons, if you're in a nice rhythm, sometimes you want to stay in that in that rhythm. Um, and so there's uh, two ways to, to see the bye. I, I do think for us, where we're at currently this time of year, was it came at a good time. Thank you. Kevin, for you, uh, going back to this, evaluating all six games as you went through them, I'm wondering what, what moments did you just like and think, boy, we just had that play. And then were there things you thought, oh, we're closer there than, than, than I thought, or this is, this is going okay? What, what sort of yeah. evaluation for that? 
Yeah, I start with the kind of way in your cringe. Obviously, when we couldn't finish, you have had multiple opportunities offensively through the first six games to finish some things, and we didn't do it, whether, you know, getting stopped the red zone, turning the thing over, that. Uh, at the flip side of that, when you're cringing, we're that close. We just got to take the next step of being able to, to finish. Um, I think there's opportunities we look at as defensively to get to take the ball away a couple of times would have you know changed things and so um, those things kind of individually stood out to me on the six games. John, on the whole of those six games you guys run defense I think has been pretty good. Uh, when you went back and looked at what stood out to you in that regard and looking toward Iowa, just what, what, how's it, how important is it to get back to that and things what are the things that they do well on the ground? Yeah. You know, it does start with stopping the run, and we've had some success. Six games, you throw it all together, uh, playing some run defense. I think it does help, help the tackles for loss, right, statistically when you, you get some of those numbers. And we're going to have to play a team defense against this run game. Uh, they've got a mix of schemes, so it's not just all you know, one particular run play. They've got a nice back that's not easy to tackle. So going back to the team defense, we get multiple guys to the ball to, to bring this guy down. Yeah, we were, we were trying to take the last couple of weeks to just see if he could kind of get to a place um, that he felt better uh, about getting back out there. He just did not, over the last couple of weeks, get to that point. So made the decision to to call it good for this season. And, and we're you know tough tough blow support support him. Do feel like we got some depth in that room that's played the last couple of weeks and can carry the load. I think the closest one would be Alante. We'll we'll see. I'm hopeful he can get back by the by the end of the season. Um, uh, he's moving around a little bit, but getting cleared to play in the game, he's not quite there. You know, overall says we've got to find some consistency. Um, we, we hadn't played as consistent as a group of five out there that we've liked. We've got to find a way to get more of that. These guys are working. Um, emphasize that a little bit on Wednesday, playing a, a lot of good on good, to be honest with you. And that was a lot for the line of scrimmage. One, for our, ourselves to continue to find that consistency, the O-line, but really every position. And then looking to what we anticipate this game being so physical, we wanted to kind of replicate that in practice. Uh, I uh, not not totally. I mean, again, five and six. We've got multiple reps with guys. We want those guys to continue to, to get more consistent. When we saw Kirk Ferentz and in Indy stop me and said, "Hey, you got the right coach. Do you know him or just know about him? And what do you think of one of your Iowa football?" Yeah, well, don't know Kirk um, well. Traded some some texts and things. Awesome kind of career he's put. Um, together, um, you know, just got respect for a guy to be in this business long term and you, just the stories you hear, you hear former players talk about him, not just about wins and losses and his approach. I just got the utmost respect for it. Uh, Coach, Iowa's defense uh, has been their strong suit for years. Yeah. Um, is facing defenses like Ohio State and Oregon, not just not prepared for Iowa's, but stronger defenses around college football? Yeah, I think it does when you play you know, high-end talent with scheme, and these guys do a really good job schematically. you got good players from the front to the back end of the thing. Uh, they take some pride in their, in their style. They make you earn it, right? They're not just blitzing every snap. Um, they've been opportunistic in regards to taking the ball away, and that just plays right into their hand with style of program with the run game and special teams. Coach, in terms of penalties, what steps are we taking to reduce them for the next two weeks, especially, you know, we are on track for, um, you know, a bowl game. What are we doing there to help reduce those? Yeah, if you try to, uh, you want these guys playing full speed um, to the whistle, not after it, right? And then you definitely want to eliminate the self-inflicted before the snap, right? So stuff that we entirely control. And, you know, say what, <laughs> three wins for us this year, we, our penalty in was sky high. Well, we got the penalty things a lot better, and, and we're 0 for 3 the last three weeks, so I'm not certain 
the penalty sides. We're not trying to go zero penalties. That's not the goal. Um, but we want to definitely be smart and play with awareness. Uh, was this, just to clarify, Wednesday the only day you guys practice? Last okay. week, yeah. 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 And, when, that, and then yesterday. Is that typical for you, or did you feel like you needed some extra time, I guess? Or is that sort of how you it? Think? kind of where it plays. I mean, typical depends on when your buy is. And with us going six straight weeks, especially the you know quick turnaround Ohio State to the travel of Friday night in Oregon, it felt like the recovery was really important. That's why we went just once. Gotcha. And just for you, I mean, as a coach, did you <laughs> yeah, you know, a little bit, got a little bit of extra family time, but really on Saturday, of course, I found myself watching a little little football, but, you know, got a little time there. I think that's important for really the entire build, for players, coaches, to find some time to, you know, get away from it. Um, and I think most coaches did get a little family time on Saturday. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Coach, you talked about some of the negatives, but what are the biggest, maybe positive you saw that 16 evaluation things you really think you can build on to improve for the next little second half of the schedule? Yeah, you got a lot of snaps playing team defense. I think the effort uh, and, and the how factor they've been playing with for six weeks, if we can sustain that, that's something to build off. I look at us offensively. We've had plenty of times capable of moving the ball for longer drives, not just like two play hits or something. We just got to take a step and finish it. I think on special teams, you know, I think we're kicking the ball pretty well. You look at statistically how we're punting uh, kickoffs, and obviously Jonathan Kim has been lights out. So those things have been, been really good. I, I wonder about the, the penalty question kind of makes me look at Iowa. They don't get penalized very much. And you play a team against, you play against a team that doesn't get penalized very much. Like, do you have to play them differently or do you prepare for that? Or well, well, you just got to, they make you earn it, right? They're not going to just give you freebies here and there and so they're playing with great technique their hands are thinking about offensively hands inside this is a good old line well coached uh, that you know don't hurt themselves flip it on the other side defensively you don't get a bunch of them just giving you free five yards or 15 yards here and so they just make you earn it you said you watched a little football on Saturday I assume you might have caught a little of uh, Ohio State and Oregon having just played those two teams what was your take on that kind of instant class yeah I uh I did see see that one, not start to finish, but a lot of it. Um, just impressive, you know, two teams playing at a high level, going back and forth. Um, both those teams responding, talent on the field, schematics. So, you know, it, was, it was a good college football game. Thanks, guys.